we'd like to present some fascinating discoveries of a kind that rarely occur in modern humanities. Our attention was grabbed by a group of bizarre coin finds from Central Eastern and Northern Europe, which appear to be imitations of Roman coins. Prior to our research project, very little was known about them. The name we gave our project is Imagma, from the Latin words Imagines Maestatis, meaning Images of Majesty. The acronym IMAGMA is also a reference to ENIGMA, a German ciphering system from World War II. Just like an international team of cryptologists, many of them Poles, once deciphered the messages sent using the ENIGMA machine, so the IMAGMA team, thanks to international cooperation and the use of cutting-edge technologies, managed to unravel the enigma of the imitative barbarian coins and the origins of early medieval European coinage. Our story begins in the 3rd century AD and continues until the 6th century, the time of the migration period and the emergence in Western and Southern Europe of the first Germanic kingdoms. However, between the 1st and the 4th centuries, a major political force in the region was the Roman Empire, with borders in mainland Europe extending north to the Rhine and the Danube. The territory beyond, described in the sources as Barbaricum, was settled by different communities ruled by powerful elites. The 3rd century is a period of the emergence on the territory of present-day Poland, of tribal federations and war bands, the followers of Gothic and Vandal elites. Mass invasions of Roman territory by barbarian war bands, and the migration of large groups from Central Europe to Western Ukraine, the Carpathian Arc, and southwestern Germany triggered the crisis of the 3rd century. The rich warm south and the prospect of huge plunder drove repeated barbarian incursions across the well-defended Roman frontier. Around AD 250, forces led by Gothic elites invaded the Balkans and pillaged many Roman towns in the provinces. In AD 251, the Emperor Trajan Decius tried to stem the tide at Abritus on the Lower Danube, but suffered an ignominious defeat and was killed in battle, together with his son Herennius. Decius was the first Roman Emperor to perish on the battlefield, fighting an external enemy. Our analysis showed that in the pool of Roman gold coins dated to between the 1st and 3rd century found in the territory of Barbaricum, the predominant group are those minted by Emperor Decius and his immediate predecessors. Some of them were deliberately cut up into fragments and deposited in a sacral context, in a grave or a cemetery. This is how early Germans treated war plunder. Taking this as a point of departure, we made a guess that after the Battle of Abritus, the Goths had captured the Roman imperial treasury. It must have contained a large amount of gold in the form of coins, possibly also bars. These were carried by the Gothic retinues back to their homeland in Barbarica. This hypothesis was widely accepted by researchers. The peak of the barbarian invasions on the territory of the empire, and at the same time the apogee of its crisis, came in the third quarter of the third century. In the reign of Emperor Gallienus, Gothic retinues erupted into Asia Minor, destroying and plundering many rich Roman cities. One of them was Alexandria Troyas, a Roman colony situated near the site of ancient Troy. This fact is confirmed by written sources and archaeological investigations. On the other hand, the numismatic analyses done as part of our project yielded unexpected results. Apparently, during this particular raid, the Goths also plundered the local mint. Since the reign of Gallienus, it had been striking colonial coins made of bronze. The Goths seized the dyes and presumably abducted the minters as well. Using these resources, they started to strike their own coins, only they used gold instead of bronze. 
Gold coins struck using the dyes of Alexandria Troyas were noted in Western European collections for the first time and published around the middle of the 19th century. However, until recently not even the most outstanding numismatists were able to offer a valid explanation of their origin. A new explanation became possible thanks to the research carried out within our project and the recording of new finds of these coins in western Ukraine, the region settled during the second half of the 3rd century by Gothic societies. This must be the first case ever of a confirmed robbery of an ancient mint. The dyes, particularly the legends engraved on them, became worn, so the Gothic engravers decided to deepen them. The problem is, they did not know Latin, so in place of the worn-out Latin letters, they engraved meaningless marks and symbols. Furthermore, they started to modify the images. And this is how the barbarian, or to be more exact, Gothic imitative coins were born. Some of these images were pure inventions of the Germanic minters and lack any counterparts in the Roman coinage. As such, they may be recognized as the first native Germanic coins. We have evidence from archaeology that gold working in Gothic societies living in Pomerania and eastern Poland was highly developed as early as the 2nd century. The Goths had mastered various manufacturing techniques, such as chasing, granulation, filigree, gilding and silvering. Consequently, Gothic craftsmen would not have found it difficult to cast up coin blank or even a finished coin from non-ferrous metal or an alloy. Discoveries made in recent years in western Ukraine confirmed the presence in this region of workshops where copies of Roman denarii were made. This is indicated by finds of casting molds, unfinished pieces and production waste, and the presence of casting jets identified on the copies. On the other hand, the Gothic craftsmen lacked the skill to engrave coin dies in the Roman way. Instead, they developed a very clever process. To reconstruct this technique, we use many advanced analytical methods, including X-ray fluorescence studies, XRF elemental analysis, optical microscope studies, reflectance transformation imaging, and 3D scanning. Germanic craftsmen pressed a Roman coin, either its obverse or reverse, into a lump of clay to make a mold. After firing it, they filled the mold with a copper alloy. The resulting Patrix, or transfer dye, was extracted from the mold by breaking it and then hubbed into a heated matrix, the future coin dye, which had the design and legend of the prototype Roman coin. As a next step, the Gothic moneyers could emphasize the contours and outlines by additionally engraving the dye. As a result, both the images and lettering could differ from the prototype. Sometimes only a fragment of a coin would be pressed into the mold, for example, only the design or only the legend. This explains why some coins may have the same legend but a different design, while others have the same design but a different legend. Many of the imitative coins were silver or gold-plated. No deposits of precious metals were exploited in Barbaricum during antiquity. Because of this, to determine the chemical composition and the origin of the metal used in making the barbarian coins, we used many, mostly non-invasive, analytical techniques, using X-ray fluorescence spectrometry and laser ablation. It turned out that the chemical composition of the gold and silver imitative coins corresponded, as a rule, to the composition of Roman coins. Consequently, the two precious metals used to make the Germanic imitations were, as a rule, of Roman origin. They found their way to Barbaricum in the form of bars, coins or objects, as tribute, annual payments or as war plunder, as was the case for the imperial treasury captured at Arbritus. In the late 3rd and early 4th century, the stream of Roman gold and silver was significantly reduced. This is reflected by the large pool of gold or silver plated imitations, or ones made of alloys which imitate silver. The earliest Germanic silver imitations, from a reliably dated context, originate from the bog deposit at Illerup in Jutland, Denmark. These have been dated to the early 3rd century. 
Four specimens struck from the same pair of dyes had been buried inside a purse belonging to a warrior of a defeated war band of outsiders from Scandinavia. Their entire war gear was cast into the lake by the local victors and 17 centuries later investigated in great detail and published by archaeologists. Nevertheless, these coins from Illerup are only the first result of Germanic experiments with making imitations. Our studies suggest that all the forms of Germanic coinage evolved in the Gothic environment in western Ukraine. It is here, starting from around AD 250, that Gothic minters engaged in mass-scale production, casting coin blanks and striking, using their own dyes, imitative coins, both gold or gold-plated, silver or silver-plated. They also cast similar coins using silver-hued alloys. The production of gold imitations during the early 4th century in the reign of Constantine the Great and his successors may be seen to shift with the migrating Gothic elites to the region on the Middle Danube. From Ukraine, Gothic gold imitations spread, presumably as an effect of ceremonial exchange across Central and Northern Europe to Poland, the Great Hungarian Plain, Northwestern Germany and Denmark. On the other hand, the production of silver copies struck from dyes and cast in molds continues in western Ukraine until the early migration period, around AD 450, the time of the Gothic migrations to the territory of the Roman Empire and to Scandinavia. These coins have been recorded in almost every corner of Barbarico, often in hordes of original Roman denarii. Many are known from Poland and western Belarus, the Great Hungarian Plain, northwestern Germany, and clustering on the Baltic Islands, on Gotland in particular. Almost all of the gold and gold-plated imitative coins found in Barbaricum, like the original Roman gold coins, were pierced and starting from the late 3rd century were provided with a loop for suspension. The hole was usually placed above the head of the emperor portrayed on the obverse of the coin or the head of some member of his family. Consequently, these coins were used as pendants and were prestige objects where the imperial portrait had a symbolic, possibly apotropaic meaning. We can safely assume that, in the second half of the 3rd century, these coins were used as a reward for valor on the battlefield and a special mark of affiliation to a retinue. The reason for their manufacture was an insufficient influx of Roman gold coins, coupled with the growing ambitions of Gothic warriors and their leaders. Silver imitations, as a rule, were not pierced or provided with a loop. Thus, their role is less easy to guess. Perhaps they were used as a supplement of Roman denarii, which continued in use in the Barbaricum until the migration period, as a means of payment, and thesaurization. In late antiquity, silver is an important element of family treasures of Germanic elites. The difference in the uses of gold and silver imitative coins determined their later evolution. It went in two separate directions, which may be described as the symbolic prestigious and economic roots. Direct contacts between the elites established in Western Ukraine and Scandinavia in the 4th century and the migration of a part of the Gothic societies to the north resulted in the transfer of skills and know-how, which was accompanied by a transfer of ideas. This led to the emergence in Scandinavia of imitations of Roman medallions, solidi, Nordic bracteates. The inscriptions on bracteates are in runic script, and the iconography is a distant echo of the Roman designs, drawing from the Nordic pantheon, the god Odin on horseback in particular. All the imitations of medallions and the single-sided bracteates are fitted with a loop. This was the symbolic prestigious direction of the evolution of the gold imitations. However, the greater part of the Gothic elites and their communities had migrated to the Middle Danube region, and later still, even further south and west. In the 5th century, the first Germanic mint was established at Sirmium, now Sremska Mitrovica in Serbia. It struck silver coins with monograms of the Germanic rulers. This was the economic direction in the process of evolution of silver imitations, which would continue uninterrupted until the early medieval period. Prior to the Imagma project, the prevailing opinion was that the beginnings of German coinage go back to the late 5th and the 6th century, to the times when Germanic peoples were settling territories of the Western Roman Empire. Our findings have unequivocally proven that that view was wrong. We made a breakthrough discovery. The roots of German coinage have to be pushed back at least 200 years to the second half of the 3rd century and situated in a different place, areas in western Ukraine.